Crime is getting worse and worse in cities all across America. Just since Friday, at least 58 people were shot in Chicago, including many children, multiple children shot. Meanwhile, in cities like San Francisco, instead of hiring more police officers, they're paying criminals not to commit crime. Joining us now is a member of Donald Trump's 1776 Commission and author of the book BLM, The Making of a New Marxist Re Revolution, which comes out tomorrow, Mike Gonzalez. Mike, thank you and, and welcome to the show. So I'm looking at these numbers and they don't seem to be getting any better. Crime in Chicago is skyrocket. It's my hometown. I call it Chirac. I'm, I'm, I'm just disgusted what's going on in that city. 58 people shot so far on the holiday weekend. I can't imagine what the number is going to be by the time we wake up tomorrow morning. What, what's going on here? What's happening? Eric, uh, thanks a lot for having me on. And actually, you're bringing up an excellent point. This is really this, this huge spike in crime. Some people put it at 25 uh, percent. Peter Moscow's uh, John Jay College of Criminal Law, uh, Criminal Justice puts it at 35 uh, percent. Uh, the, the, the biggest, by the way, the biggest spike in, in, in homicides since 1968, uh, another year that was charged with, with political, uh, uh, political violence. This is all the legacy of Black Lives Matter. This is why I have written the book that I, that I have, uh, because we don't hear so much about Black Lives Matter anymore. But all the ways in which our lives have been made much inferior today, uh, either the crime that you bring up quite rightly or, or the, the, the divisive critical race theory conflicts that we see coast to coast, all of this is the legacy of the year 2020, the violence that we saw, the riots, uh, and, and how much it has changed our lives. I traveled to 12 cities uh, in the last two months. Uh, I've been to Chicago. I've been to Dallas, da Dallas, Denver, everywhere, Indianapolis, Omaha. I'm going to go to another 12 cities. All I hear about is crime. And it, I, I believe, and I've mm -hmm. written in my book, this is a clear legacy of Black Lives Matter in 2020. You know, can we call it a, a, a BLM effect, so to speak? The fallout is, is, is rise in crime. And, and, and by the way, are we, are we supposed to, as a, as a population, as a nation, just to accept a higher rate of homicide in our major cities? Well, we see you and I are old enough to remember what it was like uh, before the early 90s, before Giuliani came in and, and, and how, how our cities went back to being livable places. Uh, you, you remember the, the, what New York was like in the 70s and 80s. I had to convince my son, who were there visiting, visiting colleges two years ago, I had to convince him that, that Times Square was once a place where he wouldn't have gone into. He couldn't believe it. We're rapidly going back to that, and it has to do with the, the, the pullback by the police. Everyone is saying so. The police, uh, they, they, first of all, the they, they, they demands that the police, uh, uh, you know, well, not well, be used well, that to, to well, defund the police. Allow me. Allow me. Yeah. Well, allow me. I only have about a minute or so, and, and I want to I want to dig into this, and, and when we uh, maybe if we bring you back with more time, but but is it is it that be, because the population, the general population, is so afraid to be called racist that we accept everything that that Black Lives Matter says is true, and, and all these Democrat um, policymakers say, uh, 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 agree with, where crime seems to be okay if it's committed under the the, the realm of. Oh, it's Black Lives Matter. I'm just I'm thinking about all the all the looting and, and destruction that went on last summer. And all those people seem to have been let go, not even prosecuted. Now we're almost accepting it. If it's, it's under the guise of racism, that people can get away with anything now because people because the people who are in order, who are, who are for law and order, don't want to be called racist. So it becomes on us. It's 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 their world to play with, I guess. Well, you for, yeah, we forgot to mention the root prosecutors, which also play a huge part in this. No, I'm seeing Americans, up in, I'm seeing Americans re revolting about this, revolting about this and about critical race theory, also a legacy of Black Lives Matter. I think that you, what you just described as a political class, many of our politicians refuse to discuss this. I wrote this book to actually um, force them to discuss how these Marxist organizations who set out to destabilize society yeah. have done just that, have destabilized society. But I think the American people are having none of it. And they're, they're, it, 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 it's, a, it's a nationwide revolt against the indoctrination of our children and the rising crime and every all the other legacies of Black Lives Matter, the fact that we have Crazy. color conscious policies now being signed into law, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to have to leave it there, Mike, but it's a very it's fascinating, fascinating topic. 
Make sure you pick up the book, everybody. Mike Gonzalez, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Eric. Thanks for watching the Heritage Foundation's YouTube channel. With more than half a million members, we are the nation's largest conservative research and education institution. We believe the principles and ideas of the American founding are worth conserving and renewing. Please help us further our mission by subscribing to this channel and sharing our videos with your family and friends.